So, what we're going to do today is have a go at refurbing the wheels on the caravan. Um, they're not brilliant to look at. Um, a few scuffs on them. Uh, they've been curbed by previous owners. Um, and they're just looking really tired, so I want to lift them. We're going to change the colour slightly, make them a slightly darker grey. Um, and we're going to try and deal with some of the curb rash that's on the wheels. And I'll give you a couple of little hinters, uh, ideas, guidance along the way that will hopefully help you out. So this is one of the wheels. Um, it's not in too bad a condition. It has a few little marks up here. There's some more there. We've got a couple of little scuff marks around here. And I'm hoping just to be able to sand those out a little bit. If I can't make them perfect, I'll certainly make them better. Um, there's a lot of muddy water got splashed on them. Uh, the caravan stays on our farm and sods like it was raining when I took it back. So they're going to get a bit of a, a clean up prior to spraying. Um, also, on your tyres, in case you didn't know, they should be changed every five years. If we look at the tread on this one, the tread is like brand new. The tyre itself, this one's either 17 or 18, I can't remember which. Uh, if I can see the number, I will show you. So there we go. That four digit number there, 3618, means that this tyre was made in week 36 in 2018. Now that doesn't mean that's when it was fitted onto the wheel, or indeed when it went on the road. But it just means that it's five years old. Oh sorry, it means at the moment it's three years old, or two and a half. And I've got another two and a half years before I need to change it. Now, in order for me to be able to do this work on here and to spray them up, what I need is for the temperature in here to rise because it's pretty cold. So I've got a radiator, but I've also got a fan heater, which I'm just turning back on now. So I apologise if you can hear the fan but when I'm not talking um, there'll be music on anyway just to relieve the boredom so the first thing I'm going to do is take out the centre cap um, I have seen people stab at these with screwdrivers and god knows what else basically if you turn it round a couple of fingers in the middle and just push her out for cleaning what I generally use is I kind of do a two-in-one cheat um, rather than just use soapy water I use glass cleaner because that will degrease at the same time now you shouldn't get much grease around most of the rim but you might get a little bit of grease around the, the bolt holes in, in this case I don't have studs on mine I have bolts um, and so if anybody else is kind of overzealous with copper grease and stuff like that on the drum to help stop the wheel from sticking it can come through and you only want the smallest amount of grease to have a crappy finish on your paint so I'm just going to start prepping this wheel ready I'm only using rattle cans to spray it a um, bit of wet and dry and we'll see how we get on Thank you. 
some of these marks on the rims themselves are now confusing me because they're they're coming off really easy and I think what it is is actually old release agent from when the tires were fitted it was never wiped off and it's gone hard so hard in fact that it feels like the rim itself has been scuffed which is great news because it means obviously they haven't so they're in better condition than I thought well there are a couple of scuffs on it Off. What we don't want is um, marks between the new and the old. Sorry, let me rephrase that. What we don't want is unsmoothed chips and stuff like that because they will show through the new paint and then it'll just look crappy which we don't want after all the whole idea of doing this is to try and make the, the wheels and the caravan look a little bit more presentable as many of you will know uh, lunar caravans have gone tits up um, so it's getting more and more difficult to get the correct parts and while you can replace most caravan wheels I think it's always best to go with like for like, especially if you only change in one. So that's, we're getting there slowly. Always keep it really wet. That'll help stop the gouges and scratches. I'm using a, like a scotch brake type which will key up the um, the paint underneath. All this rubbish about rubbing it all the way back down to the metal and then etch primer and primer and so those are old bollocks really. You've already got the best primer you can get on there, which is your existing paint. I'm using a scotch bright on it like this will just rough it enough to give it a key for the new paint to take and it really doesn't have to be a lot just a little bit just don't want to miss bits now I'm only going to be spraying the front of these which some people might think is a bit wasteful, not wasteful, that's the wrong word. Um, a bit like cutting corners. But the first time you take it out on a wet road, you're not going to see what colour it is behind there anyway. So. hardest thing that we have to do is to mask it up. job that I didn't go quite so mad at cleaning the wheels while they were on the caravan because I might have changed my mind about refurbing them. They come up quite nice actually. But there is damage and if we're going to do it, we're going to do it.
Right, so you see some of the areas that I've rubbed are um, it's almost like they've used a black primer underneath. But that might matter. Now we're still slightly uh, wet, but you're certainly no good for trying to mask it up while it's like that. So what we'll do is we'll put this one to one side, make a start on the second one. And then in a couple of days time I can swap the wheels back over. We'll put these two back on. And bring the other two over. So at the moment my caravan is sitting quite happily on the farm with two wheels on one side and no wheels on the other side. But it is on axle stands. Whatever you do, do not ever be tempted to uh, use your steadying legs to jack up your caravan or even to try and hold the weight while you change a wheel because all that will happen is you'll either bend them or possibly even push the pad on the top which fixes to the floor straight through the floor and you end up with a caravan steady in your bathroom, your bedroom, under the bed God knows where right. the water out of these, make it easier to dry, and we're going to grab the next one. So again, we'll just tap out the centre nut, sorry, centre cap. And retrieve it before it gets lost forever. So actually, it's a little bit of a shame. I mean, this one's filthy dirty. Well, they're all filthy dirty at the moment. Let's give that a bit of a wipe. You can see there is a, a light grey line around the edge, um, which is obviously designed to go with there. I'm going to be using a, a darker silver. I think this is actually the colour that they're going to be ending up. It's almost like a gunmetal grey. So it's quite a lot lighter than the original wheel. Sorry, quite a lot darker than the original wheel. Once I've uh, done it and I put the cap in, if it looks weird, then what I shall end up doing is masking off the centre circle with the logo and just spray that last two, three mil around the edge in the dark colour to match. But hopefully we won't have to because that will be fiddly and I'm not sure how well it will last on there, but we'll see. Same again, plenty of water, water, yeah, soapy water if you're using just water, this is obviously glass cleaner as I said previously. I don't think this one has got much in the way of damage on it at all, so we'll give this one a bit of a clean up before we start sanding. It feels like there's a little spot there. Be another one there. And always try, just so that you don't miss bits, try and have like your own little program in place of, as to how you do it. So with me, I generally do the rim and then I'll do the spokes and then I'll do between the spokes sometimes I'll change that 
and sometimes I'll do half the wheel, move it, and then do the other half. Nothing worse than thinking you've got it all clean and primed and degreased. Sorry, not primed, prepped. Cleaned, prepped and degreased. Put your paint on and you end up with the paint reacting to the grease on the wheel. And I have to rub it all down and start again. That nobody wants. So, just been in, double checked, I've got no plastic, <clears throat> I've got no playing cards, so it's good old fashioned masking tape, and let's see how we get on. The problem with this is, I haven't got any of the narrow tape, so it's going to be lots of bits all the way round so that we don't pucker it up too much. That was pucker it up and not bugger it up. I should do that without any any help at all I'm sure. This is one of those times where you need a bit of patience and I'm afraid I don't have patience. It's not a word that I generally use. I want everything done like yesterday. We'll get there. Again, it goes back to what I was saying earlier about the preparation. You spend an extra few minutes getting everything ready, and um, the end result is always better. using quite a bit of tape. But we'll get there. Well, I think you get the gist of where we're going. Let's see if I can get you in a bit nearer without making you too dizzy. Just continue that all the way round, and we've done the uh, the valve over there because we don't want to spray that. And then once we're done, then we can start laying down the first of the coats of paint. Now what I'll probably do is do a, a very light tack coat to start off with. That's tack, T-A-C-K, 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 as in sticky, because it will help the rest of the paint to stick. If you just do a, a full-on massive spray to start with, there's a very good chance that it won't take... The other good thing about doing this with uh, the way that I'm doing it is it gives you that extra little bit of time looking at your tyres because you generally have a, a quick look, yeah they look fine, don't worry about it. But you need to be looking for damage in the tyre, you might have run over something, you might not even feel it because the caravan invariably will have a different wheelbase to the, the car and the car tyres might have missed it. The caravan might have hit it. It might have been something that you flicked up with the car. All right, I'm going to bring you back in a minute because you don't need to see me spending half an hour doing this. So, 
So, there we are ready to go. Missed a bit. Good job I spotted it before we started spraying. Still got one or two droplets of water in some of these which obviously we don't want right here we go again so this one is now ready for its tack coat and as you can see we're all masked up Still got the radiator. I've got the temperature up in here, um, but I've turned off the convector heater because it's a direct heat, and I don't want any of the residue that's airborne from this spray can to get into the heater. Okay, now here we go. So what we've got to try and do is to make sure that we get in all of the undersides. So I should try and do those first and then we can lay the wheel flat and do over the top. But as I said, this is only a tack coat to start off with, so you keep the can upright as much as you can. And that's it. That's all that's going to get for the moment. Now, now that I've seen how wide the uh, the spray is, I'm just going to ask for the rest of the tire while that dries. Won't matter too much if we get paint on the tread because the first time. We First time we move the caravan, it'll wear off on the road. But then when it's on the side walls, you know what they say about prior planning, preventing a piss poor performance. I think that's going to look all right that colour actually. Wasn't too sure. Well, I think it's just about the right shade of darkness compared to what I had previously. And that's nothing special there, it's just there was a little tiny hole and a, the tape tore at a weird angle. Rather than just throw it away, we make use of it. I've got lacquer. For those of you that don't know what lacquer is, it's nothing to do with your hair. It's 
shit, who am I to start telling people what to do with hair? I don't have any. Very little. But it's kind of like a varnish that you put over the paint to give it a nice shiny finish. Another name for, for the lacquer is clear coat. So technically it's it's just paint without a colour dye in it. There's no pigment. Just gives it a nice clear, shiny finish. Right. Too bad. I'll give that a, a bit more. And this time we'll pay a little bit more attention to the areas that we've rubbed down so we get a bit of paint in there. Right, any areas that have reacted so far. Just going to open the garage door in a minute. Love the smell of cellulose but it's not that good for you. So between each of these coats I'm giving it about 10 minutes um, just to let it go tacky dry and hopefully that way we won't get any runs in it um, and I'm not sure whether the camera will pick this up but this this particular um, aerosol what you'll find is most aerosols tend to spray um, a cone shape so it comes out of the nozzle thin and expands um, into the thicker end of the cone this puts out a flat spray which is gives a much nicer coat but the cheaper cans don't tend to do that turn it around just to make sure that I'm getting up into there because I'm coming from one direction and make sure that we've got all the angles covered just think we have so far that's looking pretty good to dry. If I had enough room in here I could put it across to one side and start on the next one but I think what I'll do discretion is the better part of valour as they say we'll um, let this one dry for 10-15 minutes just to avoid any runs and then um, we'll make a start on the other one Bring you in a bit closer. 
just so you can see. The lighting in here is not brilliant. But she looks fairly good. Now at the moment obviously that's not got its clear coat lacquer on. So any shine that you can see will be where it's wet. It will dry with a, a matte finish. So as you can see I'm now masking up the, the next wheel. I'm not going to show you all of this. What you've seen on the first one, just repeat for the other wheels. Whether it be another one wheel or another two wheels. Um, and I wasn't even going to put the, the camera on, but I just wanted to mention something while I think of it. Because I'm a bugger for forgetting. And that's a little tip for doing the, the valves. Um, as you can see, I've masked the valves. But if you've got a little piece of garden hose kicking around and you cut a couple of inches off the end of that, sorry for those of you that are younger, PC, whatever you want to call it, 50 odd mil. And just slide that over the end. Obviously, it won't stick there, but you can always put just something over the valve itself just to make it a bit thicker so that the tape, oh, sorry, so that the pipe is a tighter fit, it doesn't just fall off each time you move the move the wheel because it'll be sod slow when you go to move it. That piece of pipe will fall off and land right in the middle of your wheel and bugger your paint. Um, you'll also notice that I've put some blanket on the floor. You can use blanket, plastic, whatever you want. Now this might sound um, double dutch. Um, what you want is something that's not going to put fluff onto your paint. Now although these are a fluffy blanket, they're not a loose fluff if that makes sense. It's, it's not coming off. Um, so we're okay at the moment. This is the first time I've used these for spraying and that wasn't what they were bought for. And I've just seen a whimsy bit there that's been missed. That's better. Um, these were bought more for covering the bike which is sitting behind me so we didn't get paint on the bike and for keeping stuff wrapped up warm um, when needed. Now again that might sound a bit strange but sometimes I'll put stuff out here that needs to be kept warm or cold. It's generally cold in this garage except in the summer and then because I painted the door black because I thought it looked cool it's now acting like a radiator and heating it up. So enough chat for now. You go and make yourself a coffee or whatever. I'll finish this bit and I'll be back in a bit. So, there's rim number two, all up and ready to go. Just seen a bit like it could help a little bit better. Probably won't make much difference, but I'm going to do it. Let's get it right. We're going to do it. Let's get it right. Something that I forgot to say when I was doing the first wheel and I was talking about X primer, primer and then building your coats up. That's only if you're going to be using just ordinary cellulose or two pack or whatever paint you're going to use. This is actually wheel paint that doesn't need any primer whatsoever. What it does need 
There's a lot of bloody shaking. And that's all that's getting for that coat. That is your tack coat, except I've missed a bit. So it's not all it's going to get. It's going to get down there. I need to turn the wheel around a, a bit, I think. It's better. There we go. Well, that's had a chance to cure a bit. We'll give it a bit of a better coat now. And then we lay it down so that we can start to build the layers. Again, you'll notice that I've turned off the uh, convector heat, and that's the word I was looking for. Time to leave it alone. This is the problem a lot of people have when they're painting, is they want to rush it. You have to let each coat dry before you put the next one on, or at least get to a tack level. If you keep going, oh, I'll just put a bit there, and a bit there, and a bit there, before you know it, you've built it up too much, and you end up with runs. Not the runs, just runs in your paint. That'll do for that. We'll come back to that in a bit. It's looking quite good. There's no runs, no bits in it, and as far as I can see so far, no reactions. And we'll give that one last light coat. Make sure everything's covered. There. That should be it. Time to vacate the building for a little bit back in a bit okay so that's had probably an hour and a half since the last coat of paint and we're now going to put some clear coat on Hands actually colder than anything. Give that a second. It's gone on a little bit uneven because the can was uh, cold, so obviously the pressure inside is a little bit. Try and warm it up.
looks pretty good. Let's see if I can get the other one in at the side of it without covering them all in fluffy crap. Well, incidentally, just before I came back on, turned the camera back on, I tried the centre cap. I didn't push it right into place. But I'll just leave it in there. Move it around in a second. There we go. So I've just laid it in there and it does kind of look a little bit, a little bit light. So no scratching the paint because although it's touch dry it won't be hard yet. So all I'm going to do with these is I shall mask them up and then run a knife really sharp on the scalpel around the edge, remove this, sorry not to remove the centre, to leave the centre covered but take away that little piece on the edge and then we'll spray that two or three mil line around the edge with the dark colour and then we'll, we'll see how it looks. If it still looks weird, I might just spray the whole centre cap the same colour, but we'll play that by here. because I nearly picked up the grey paint then instead of the clear paint. Actually what they're side by side. If we go from that one to that one you can see there's a there's a huge difference once that clear coat goes on. Each time you hear that noise coming out of the tin, it's the pressure fluctuating, which means that the amount of spray that's coming out is fluctuating, which will give us an uneven coat. So it's going to take a couple of coats to build it up. So I tried to mask up the the edges of the centre caps and when I took the masking tape off it just looked weird, just didn't look right. So I ended up just giving them a quick scuff up and spraying the whole caps the same colour as the rims. It means I lose the Luna logo but that's no issue really. It gives me a background so that I can put a logo on my own if I want. But I think that you will agree they look a hundred times better than what the original rims did. I'm just going to leave them now for the paint to dry. You can still hear the fan in the background. I'm trying to keep the temperature right up in here at the moment. It might even look a little bit misty because I've just given the caps their last coat of uh, lacquer. But that's it. It's all done. Just leaves me to remove the uh, masking tape, put them on the rims, um, once that's done, 
we can go back on the caravan. So you should know how to do it now. No excuse. Good luck. I hope you get yours turning better than mine. Bye.